up boys and girls this is Mrs. Ott and today we will be traveling to the Arctic where it's really freezing cold and there is a lot of white there's icebergs mountains of ice polar bears beluga whales and all kinds of other animals that live in the ocean so it will be an under and over the ice type of project and we will start with a really cool polar bear. Let's get started. So before we start, let's get some inspiration from a really cool book. It's called The Polar Bear from, Je from Jenny Desmond. And I'm going to show you just a couple of the pictures. I highly recommend this book so that we can learn a little bit about facts about polar bears because we will be painting a polar bear. So they're really big, they have small furry ears, black, dark brown eyes, blue black tongue, they have really sharp and long teeth, bad breath, long neck, long thick legs, short tail, they growl, they roar, they shock, hiss, whimper and purr, and huge feet. So when we do our sketch, I'm going to look at this picture and Perhaps you can do it like this, or you can do it. I'll show you a couple other ways to, to draw um, our sketch for the polar bear. Now, something else I want to show you, which is really cool. Here is our bear, and he's sniffing. He's got really good sense of smell. Now, these are options that you can incorporate in your painting. Uh, these are all animals that live in the Arctic under the sea. So our picture, our project, is under the ocean and over the ice. So the polar bear is all the way up here. But think about all the animals that live under. So we have beluga whales, which is the one that I will be painting. But you could also do a narwhal or a walrus, a seal. So there's different, different types of seals that live in the Arctic. Harp seal bearded seal, hooded seal, ringed seal. So I'm going to do again a really cool beluga whale. Now let's look back at another page that really inspired the painting that we're doing, the project that we're doing, which is this one. And again, we are able to see the ocean below. And here is kind of like a flow or a piece of, of ice. And as you can see, it is not completely flat. This one is really big because it has to support his weight. So there he is kind of looking to see who's coming down. So I will have my beluga whale coming up and our bear is gonna be way at the top. So I hope you're ready after this little bit of inspiration. Let's get started. So here is a finished sketch of the project that we will be working on and I feel it's good to look at it before we start so you can have an idea of uh, the things that you will learn. So we will be sketching our bear first and so we will learn about proportions and how to sketch uh, an animal, a polar bear. Now a polar bear is going to be on an iceberg so we see the view or the perspective is sideways so here's your ocean and this is a piece of iceberg this is the surface of the water and then in the background we see other you know large icebergs mountains of ice and then here is our sky so our, our horizon line in this case is right here and it will separate the ocean from the mountains and here's our polar bear beluga whale or any other you know animal that lives in the arctic that you will be putting in then i sharpened using a ultra fine point sharpie and added texture so our challenge will be to add texture because there is a lot of white iceberg is white beluga whale is white polar bear is white mountains are white so we'll see how we do let's get started all right we are now ready to start our sketch 
So whenever I start a sketch, I also like to look at a real picture. So in this case, I'm going to look at this picture of this polar bear and just no notice what shapes I see um, that will help me in the sketch. So I can see if I go like this, it's kind of like an oval. And then maybe I can add another oval like this for the neck and the head. Now we can have also some shapes, bigger shapes for your legs. So this will help us as kind of like a starting point. So I'm going to say that if I wanted my bear about here, I'm going to actually start sketching the bear first. So I'm gonna put my picture here and I'm gonna start again, start with a light sketch whenever you start to sketch so that you can erase. So imagine that this is my oval for you know the main body of the bear and then I'm going to add another shape here which will give us kind of the the way the head is going so imagine kind of like that here is my neck and where do I want my bear to look I think I'm gonna have him kind of looking up so he's looking up ahead but again depending on where you want him to be looking you're gonna decide that I'm gonna add a shape here main shape for my legs and right now it's all about kind of the intention and here's the hind leg and maybe one that's in the back so this one's going to be about here. So this is kind of your intention. Now, little by little, you're going to start to refine, you know, everything. So basically right here, I'm going to say that I'm going to have a nose. And then I have the top of the head here and it curves down. To the back of the neck and then there's a kind of a little bit of a bump here in the middle of of the back right here and then it kind of slopes down and i'm going to kind of integrate the back thigh that goes back in a little bit and then it comes back out they have really really big pause and apparently under their paws it's kind of like a basketball the texture is really rugged and so that they don't skid on the ice now I'm gonna come back here and work on the nose here's my nose and here will be you know, like an opening for my mouse and I'm gonna make it go up because it's a happy bear and the lower lip and then it goes down here's the neck going down here's our chest and then I'm gonna go down to the front leg and again big paw because it has to support you know a lot of weight so here we go and i'm gonna go back up and up around here now i'm gonna work on this leg here which is on this side so again we're gonna see a nice big paw leg back leg large thighs and it goes about here remember we have a small tail there and then the belly so the belly is kind of like that sloping down Alrighty, so now we're gonna add uh, an ear, definitely. 
and you might see the one on the other side or not so I'm just gonna leave it like that and then my eye so before I make the eye I'm going to now erase all I'm gonna call them construction you know lines because we don't need them anymore we kind of have our outline and we're gonna check it again of course but this should give us an idea of where we are, what our bear is looking like, and which lines stay and which lines go. So it's kind of like step by step. It's looking pretty okay. I think this one might be a little too big. There we go. And it's kind of hiding behind. So I'm going to erase this part and let's see, we're going to add our eye right here. So he's looking this way, there we go. And we'll add some textures after. So now that our bear is basically there, I'm going to add big iceberg and it's I, I prefer to add it after so you know it's kind of like that and then it's we see this is a sideways view right so it goes down 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 there we go now here is the ocean and now I'm going to start doing the same for my whale, my beluga whale, right? So she's coming up and again, same thing. Big tail, a little bit longer tail actually. Beautiful big tail. And up like this. Now we're gonna have some fins. Now this is, I'm looking at the belly right there. So there's many different ways you could do your well. I'm going to add some eyes. And she's looking at the bear. So eyes going this way and big smile. Okay, now in the background, we're gonna have big mountain of ice like this, peaks of ice and maybe another one like that. Again, you can use your imagination or you could be more scientific and look at pictures. Now I'm going to give them a little bit of a 3D feel like this. So this goes back and this is another one that goes down. Now whenever you make your diagonal line, make sure you make this one the same. And it goes back. And right here we'll have all basically the Northern Lights. Um, and that's us more fun details. So now I will be sharpening and adding more details, but this is basically, you know, a good start. So let's go ahead and sharpie all the details using a fine point sharpie. So let's start by painting actually our skies. I always like to paint from the top down. Now the skies here is going to be what is the most colorful in the painting. So imagine the uh, aurora borealis sky um, that is full of lots and lots of colors. So I'm going to add water first so that our colors can really, really glide and kind of blend into each other. 
Now remember this is optional, you could just have a very light blue sky or even a gray sky which you could see you know very often in the Arctic but you know I want to have a little bit of more color so I'm going to add some greens and you know just lots of different colors so this is remember this is kind of the really colorful part of your painting now once you add other colors try not to blend them in so just you know add them to your painting and let them blend together naturally so that it doesn't create a big you know mud now because if you were to blend all your colors especially if you have cool colors and warm colors you will get brown so we're not really looking for a brown sky this is just like a really colorful sky even though it's a winter sky it's just incredible that we can have these incredible colors in a sky So I'm going to continue adding, you know, colors to, but they should be all really blending easily. So with watercolors, the challenge is not to have too, too much water. Too much water will create like, kind of like pools. So it's, it's a balance and it's an experiment. So just have fun with this part it's really easy and make it really really pretty and remember to just kind of let it blend on its own add a little bit more pink here so it's kind of a basically a colorful wash So I'm going to go all the way to the edge of my mountains and once I'm done I'm going to clean my brush. Now our challenge is to work on this mountain and make it you know like a very light light blue so it's kind of the sky reflecting on the ice the ice is white but the good thing is that we have so many colors on our sky i'm going to get some white with my big brush i'm going to be careful not to touch the bear because even though it's going to be also white you will see in a little bit that we'll do a different white so in this case right now we're trying to make a very light blue so I have my turquoise right here and I'm going to add it and I'm going to try to make it really really light so just a wash so with watercolor just add water to make it super light you know to achieve a tint which is just a lighter color so I'm going to continue adding right here and I go slow and if it's too much add water right away like I just did and just pull it kind of like move it around change brushes if your brush is too big so I just change to my medium brush and you might also want to have some you know paper towels are bound just in case you have too much water so I'm going to go over my bear right here now if the sky goes in like that it's okay remember sky is reflecting so now you can add a little bit more so right here I'm going to add just a little bit more so that it's not so transparent so a wash so right here, got to be careful with my bear, not to go on the bear. 
So just a really soft, soft, just soft, super soft colors. Here, maybe a little bit more. Here we go. And I'm going to add just a few more shadows. So shadows, I'm going to use the same turquoise, just in a few spots, maybe right here at the bottom. Will be a little bit darker right here. I have a line. I'm gonna just add it. This is called wet on wet, so it just kind of blends together. Now at the top right here, <clears throat> I'm gonna make it a little bit darker so that I can have, you know, some contrast between the back side of the mountain and the front. So these parts, just the same color, turquoise, just a little bit darker. And this one right here too. So this will create kind of the illusion that your mountain is basically 3D, you know, and thick. So I'm almost done here with my mountain. This one I'm going to add a little bit of water before. And trying to achieve kind of different shades of the same blue. So that my mountain looks a little bit more interesting than just completely flat. So again. I'm going to add a little bit more here. So, you know, just at the edge right here. I'm going to let that dry before I tackle my bear. And I'm going to think about my iceberg. So the iceberg, again, it's white, but I'm going to have the ocean here be kind of a dark blue from you know and then getting lighter as we go up so i'm actually i'm going to do this part first i'm going to go back to my large brush and i'm going to avoid painting my beluga well i want to try to leave it as white as as, as i can for now and i'm going to go around painting water on the paper So that my wash will go. So again, I will go from, I will lay your colors. I will start with turquoise, then go to darker blue and even black. with your ocean and um, for instance in my ocean I applied turquoise cobalt which is dark blue a little bit of purple and even some black and it's still spreading it's really wet you can see the your paper might be kind of peeling a little bit even though we're using you know heavy paper that's pretty normal so now we're going to do the iceberg so the iceberg is going to be similar to your mountains so it's ice uh, with a really light uh, turquoise, a wash, always, water first. But then on the edge right here, I'm going to try to make it a little bit darker. So it's going to be a little bit darker and then way lighter. So always start with water first. white 
for our polar bear. So we need to figure out a way to have a white that's a little bit different for the polar bear than for the beluga whale. So for the polar bear, bear I'm going to be making a white that is a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to take, this is some white acrylic paint. You can all use, also use tempera paint if you don't have acrylic and put it in my cover. You could use any plastic, um, you know, like a lid would work. And I'm going to take a little bit of tan and make different, whoops, kind of like you can make, if you are able to, make some lighter ones and a little bit slightly darker ones and try them out. And then follow the same rule that we've been following along. Water first. And in the areas that you have shadows, which would be the belly, the back of the legs, add a little bit darker value of your white. So that our polar bear is, you know, just a little bit different of a white. So it should be a very, you know, really light, very, very, you can barely see it, but you can. Um, and it's also to give shadows. So I'm going to continue doing this and you should be able to see the difference. You should also be able to see the shadows. And I'm going to do the same exact thing with Beluga Whale, but instead of a yellower um, tint or tan white, I'm going to create a gray white using basically the same steps as with the bear. white in your polar bear and in your whale you can add movement and details so movement in the ocean right here maybe you want to add some white which would give you the impression of you know like the when she blows some air there's bubbles when she moves in the water there's bottle bubbles so you can take a little bit of white paint with your ballerina brush. Now make sure your tip, you know, you want to make your bubbles really small. So you want to test it and just little tips. So you have to kind of measure the right amount of paint and the right amount of water. Don't put your bubbles just anywhere. Think that the blowhole is kind of behind and it's going to be kind of around her. You can also make kind of you know, paths or designs in the water. You can have some a little bit bigger than others. If you have access to paint pens, you can use those, which would be, you know, easier. And then you can also have access to uh, smaller tips and wider tips, or you can use your little brush. So I'm gonna continue adding movement into the ocean. And then we can also add more details in the sky. You can leave it the way it is, or you can add, you know, a few lines in the sky to kind of mimic the, the northern lights. Again, that's completely up to you. <laughs> 